Jesus was going to raise Lazarus, he gave thanks. He was going to multiply bread, he gave thanks. Thanksgiving is so powerful. If you can just be grateful, there's nothing you can earn, nothing you can do to earn is love, is grace. As a fellowship, we thank God Almighty for His grace, mercies, and favor, and for giving us the opportunity to rejoice with all city delight at home and in the diaspora as we celebrate Christmas in 2022, our acceptable year of the Lord. Indeed, we are sorted, settled, and loaded.
the appreciator serving overseer and deputy serving overseer pastors tunde and Lide bakari for their continued leadership and spiritual oversight we appreciate the leadership of the citadel and all our brethren in nigeria we appreciate the steering committee all subcommittees work groups and everyone who officiated in all meetings prayer meetings and events including atlanta 2022 we appreciate our diaspora brethren who are yet to be a part of the fellowship but who most assuredly will join their fellowship now god bless you all since cgcc diaspora family fellowship debuted in 2020 the lord has been good to us we pray he will continue to be good to us not only in 2023 but in the years to come even as we look forward to London 2024, when all sons and daughters of Pastors Tunde and Lide Bakari will once again gather as we did in 2022 at Atlanta. You certainly don't want to miss London 2024, the presidential edition. As we celebrate Christmas, we pray that we will come to the perfect understanding of the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior, and we will walk in the grace of obedience to His will. Merry Christmas! from CGCC Diaspora Family Fellowship. As a fellowship, we thank God Almighty for His grace, mercies, and favor, and for giving us the opportunity to rejoice with all city light at home and in the diaspora as we celebrate Christmas in 2022, our acceptable year of the Lord. Indeed, we are sorted, settled, and loaded. We appreciate a serving overseer and deputy serving overseer, Pastors Tunde and Laide Bakari, for their continued leadership and spiritual oversight. We appreciate the leadership of the Citadel and all our brethren in Nigeria. We appreciate the steering committee, all subcommittees, work groups, and everyone who officiated in all meetings, prayer meetings, and events, including Atlanta 2022. We appreciate our diaspora brethren who are yet to be a part of the fellowship but who most assuredly will join their fellowship now god bless you all since cgcc diaspora family fellowship debuted in 2020 the lord has been good to us we pray he will continue to be good to us not only in 2023 but in the years to come even as we look forward to London 2024, when all sons and daughters of Pastors Tunde and Lide Bakari will once again gather as we did in 2022 at Atlanta. You certainly don't want to miss London 2024, the presidential edition. As we celebrate Christmas, we pray that we will come to the perfect understanding of the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior, and we will walk in the grace of obedience to His will. Merry Christmas! from CGCC Diaspora Family Fellowship. Good morning, afternoon, evening to you all from all over the world. Welcome to the last edition of the CGCC Diaspora Family Fellowship with our serving overseer, Dr. Tundi Bakari. Thank you all for being here today. And um, I just want us to release our faith together so that we can receive everything God has in store for us that he's bringing to us through our serving overseer. Um, at this moment, I also like to acknowledge our deputy serving overseer, the one and only Mrs. B. It's such a pleasure to have you with us here today, Ma. God bless you so much, Ma. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Compliments of the season. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh, God bless you, Ma. Thank Amen. you once again, Ma. Thank you once again. And um, please just note this one housekeeping rule. If you are not driving, if you are not at work or otherwise fully engaged, please turn on your cameras, your video cameras. We would love to see you. We would love to fellowship with your faces, not just your names. God bless you as you do this. At this juncture, I would like to invite our dear sister Tolu Modara to lead us in prayer as we kickstart this meeting. Over to you. 
Thank you so much, Sister Ibukun. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It's such a pleasure, a privilege to be here. Thanks again, Mom, for being here with us. Thank you, everyone. Um, we're going to spend just about eight to ten minutes in prayer, but please and um, please permit me to start with a song. You have to manage my croaky voice, but this is very much part of the prayer. Um, I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my hand, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Has it been good to us? January, February, now December. All my life you have been faithful, all my life, all my life, all my life you have been so, so good, with every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Think about his love. Think about his consistency. Think about his steadfastness. Think about his faithfulness. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in darkest night. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend, yes, oh God. I have believed in the goodness of God all my life, all our lives. All our lives you have been faithful all through the year, all through the quarters, God. All our lives you have been so, so good with every breath that we are able oh we will sing of the goodness of god and why would we do that your goodness is running after is running after us even all through the year your goodness is running after is running after us. your goodness oh god your goodness is running after is running after us on that that note, I want you to begin to thank God for every single month of the year, every single week of those months, every single day of those weeks. When we come to God with thanksgiving, when we bring our adoration and praise, we are not just checking the box. It's not just something we tick. It's not just a routine. He has been faithful. You don't want to know how many people have been through the things you have been through, but have not come out. He has truly led us through the fire. You don't want to know how many people are clueless. They don't have direction, but his voice has been leading you. You don't want to know how many people wake up every day and with all the money in the world, they still put a gun to their heads. But God has given us a sense of purpose. Lord, we are so grateful as a fellowship, as a people, as a church, as a community, as a family, as an individual. We've come to say thank you, oh God. It's not a routine. It's not a check in the box thing we are truly 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 grateful oluwa mo pe wa amu yin wa afi ope fun e ka bi esi eledumare we are so grateful oh god we are thankful father hmm. we bless your holy name in jesus mighty name we pray now we are going to pray and the last set of the prayers are going to be for pastor and i'm going to tell you why. You know, many of the things we, we consider prayer points, particularly in Nigeria, and for those of us that live abroad, we can relate with this. There are things that if our nation were fixed, honestly, they wouldn't be prayer points. So when we pray for pastor today, I want you to know you are praying for yourself because if our nation is fixed, if pastor is fine and our nation is fixed, many of those things that are prayer points today will soon become testimony points. I'm going to read quickly from the book Book of Genesis chapter 10 and verse 21. Genesis chapter 10, verse 21. The Bible says um, that this is about Japheth. Japheth is the third son of Noah. 
ordinarily, the last biological son of Noah. But look at how the Bible describes it in Genesis chapter 10, verse 21. And children were born to shame the father of the children of Eba, the brother of Japheth, the elder. The Bible actually describes this third son, this last son of Noah as elder. And if you think that's just NKJV, if you look at Amplified, Amplified says, and also to shame the father of all the children of Eba, including the Hebrews, the older brother of Japheth, and, and, and Amplified says, or the brother of Japheth the elder. You can check NIV also, you will see Japheth being, so this is not just a coincidence. How many of you know that pastor is ordinary the last child of his father? But how many of you know that truly, like his father said to his mother, it is because of our pastor that his father and his mother are known globally today. Now, beyond that, I want us to also know that pastor is carrying on something that has begun long before before him in Nigeria. Like he taught us on October 15, the last day of the solemn assembly, many of the things we are continuing are things that began before us. I believe that a baton is being passed from Chief Obafemi Awolowo to our own pastor. That's my firm belief. I want you to bring it to lift up pastor that the grace of Japheth is coming upon him in a new dimension. It's not a fresh grace. He has always operated in that grace. He's the last of 22 children, but in a new new dimension in a fresh way, in a way he's yet to experience, the whole world will look at him and say, how did this one become the elder? How did this one become the one to whom the rest of the nation will look up to? Even the church, even the so-called politicians who are claiming a structureless structure today, they are still going to look at him because in the days to come, in the year to come, specifically, in the new year we are going into, we are going to turn around. It's it's going to be a turnaround year, and the one who was last is going to be first. Father, we thank you for your son and your servants. We thank you because this is what you have made him for. He is going to be the elder in the political space. He's going to be the elder in the economic space. He's going to be the elder in the policy space. He's going to look like a dream because of him, oh God, and because of what you have prepared him for. The nation of Nigeria will turn around in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Last but not the least, we are still going to pray for pastor. We are going to say, Lord, in this new year, you will strengthen him. You don't know what it means sometimes to be a leader. You carry so much on your head. You carry the burdens of several people. We are now going to pray for him that, Lord, you will, you will multiply strength unto him. You will multiply physical strength unto him. You will multiply physical grace unto him. You will strengthen every dimension of him. You will be well with him in every level. We will also pray for Mrs. B, the children, the grandchildren, by extension, Lord, we pray, oh God, that everyone that needs to be fine for pastor to be fine, they will be extra fine in this season. The Lord will give them grace so that there will be no form of distraction. The enemy is not going to come in any dimension to distract him for the, for the purpose, for this purpose, for this reason did he come to the world. He's coming to that fullness of time and you will perfect everyone that needs to be perfected so that he can face this moment with full focus in in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we thank you for such an awesome opportunity to fellowship with you again. Thank you for the worship we'll be going into. Thank you for the word we'll be receiving. And thank you for all that you will do afterwards. We bless your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen and amen. Can we all just unmute ourselves and say a big amen to that prayer? Amen. 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 For leading us to pray. And now I just want us to join in with Sister Shadil Yedira as she leads us to minister to the Lord in songs um, through praise and worship. Please let's sing out, let's worship God, sing to him from our hearts. He has been faithful. Over to you, Ma. Hallelujah. The Lord is good all the time. Um, if there's any time to give praise to God, I think it is now. Um, from the beginning of the year up till now, God has been so faithful to you and to me to your family and to my family and to see GCC, you know, as a, as a family. 
And so I just, I don't want you to think about what God has not done. I want you to think about what he has done. You know, so many things that he has averted that you don't even know about. He did so many things behind the scene that you did not know. You know nothing about those things. And I just want you to praise God, even if he has not done some things for you, for those things that he has done and for who he is, the mighty God, the greatest God, the holy God, the righteous judge, for who he is, I want you to worship him. And I want you to worship, I want you to be intentional, you know, take your praise to him, you know, let it get to him, let it get to him and let it be a sweet smelling servant this evening in the name of Jesus. Amazing God, amazing God, you are so faithful to us. Amazing God, amazing God, amazing Father, you are so faithful to us. Amazing, sing amazing God. Amazing God, you are so faithful to us. Amazing God, amazing God, amazing God, you are so faithful to us. Amazing God, you always come true for us. Amazing God. You always come true for us, amazing God. He always come true for you, he's a amazing God. He's always come true for you, amen. So lift up your voice, amazing God, amazing God. Oh, you always come true for us. You always come true for us, amazing God. You always come true for us, amazing. When we call upon you, you answer, amazing Father. You always come true for us, amen. Sing amen, amazing God. Amazing God, you always come true for us. Amazing. Sing Amen. Amen. Amazing God, you are so faithful. You are so faithful to us. Amazing God. Oh, you are so faithful to us. Amazing God. You are so faithful to us, amazing God. Oh, you are so faithful to us, amazing God. You are so faithful to us, amazing God. Now you are going to personalize. You are going to say, you are so faithful to me, amazing God. You are so faithful to me. Say you are so faithful to me, amazing God. Say, oh yes, I say you are so faithful to me, amazing Father. You are so faithful to me, amen. So we say, amen, amen, amen. We sing amazing God, amazing God, amazing God. You are so faithful to us, amazing God. Praising the Lord always. Praising the Lord 
always praising the Lord with all our minds, praising the Lord with all. Alleluia, my Lord is coming. Alleluia. Hallelujah, my Lord is good. He's good. He's good. He's good. Sing hallelujah. 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 My. Hallelujah. My Lord is good. He's good to me. Blessing the Lord always. Praising the Lord. Always praising the Lord with all my heart. Praising the Lord with all my heart. Oh, we sing hallelujah, my Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, it's good. It is wonderful to know that Jesus died for me. Wonderful to know. It is wonderful to know that Savior died for me. Wonderful to know. Oh, my Savior died for me and my sins he washed away it is wonderful to know that jesus died for me wonderful wonderful to know the lord reign and let the earth trembles he reign and let the earth trembles Jesus reign and lady of trembles. I say, my Lord reign and lady of trembles. Oh, Jesus reign and lady of trembles. Oh, mighty God reign and lady of trembles. He reign and lady of O oh, Son of God, reign and let the trembles. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. Mighty warrior, great in battle. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah, the man of war. Jehovah is your name. Oh, mighty warrior, great in battle. Jehovah is your Jehovah is your name. Jehovah, the man of war. Mighty warrior. Great in battle. Jehovah is mighty warrior. Mighty warrior, red in battle, Jehovah is your mighty warrior, mighty warrior, red in battle, Jehovah is sing mighty warrior. Great in battle, Jehovah is your name. Father, we thank you. Receive our praise, receive our worship in Jesus' name.
we have worship. Amen. 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 God is great and greatly to be praised. To him be all the glory, honor and adoration forever and ever. Thank you, Lord. God is good and his mercy endures forever. Thank you, Ma, for leading us in that time of worship. God bless you and keep you always and forevermore in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now it is the time to receive the word, the word of God that is ever able and ever faithful. The word of God that changes from the inside out. It is our joy as always to welcome you, sir. So great to have you with us today here, sir. God bless you. Please, all of us on this platform, join me as we welcome our dear pastor and serving overseer, Dr. Tunde Bakari. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. What a joy to be with you today. Thank you so very much for the time of prayer, the time of worship, and my beloved granddaughter, the MC tonight. <laughs> I hope your family is well. I want to thank God for bringing us to the last quarter of the year 2022. Just as I'm at the same time thanking God for grace to minister and then for grace for us to fellowship together, let me place on the register on behalf of my darling wife and myself our gratitude to all the CGCC Diaspora Family Fellowship leaders who work assiduously behind the scene to ensure that things run smoothly. I pray that the good Lord will bless every one of you, your families, your children richly in the name of Jesus. As we round off this last quarter's meeting this day, I'll be speaking on the subject, Paradise Lost and Paradise Gained. Paradise Lost and Paradise Gained. Before I go into the message, I'd like to assure every one of you either concerned or burdened about Nigeria, not sure of what's going to happen next with all that has happened so far and what is going on right now. I want to give you two texts of scripture. Number one, to assure you that God's purpose cannot be annulled by anyone or in any given circumstance. His purpose will stand sure forever. I'm reading from Isaiah chapter 14, verse 24 to 27. Isaiah 14, 24 to 27. The Lord of hosts has sworn, saying, Surely, as I have thought, so it shall come to pass. <laughs> And as I have purpose, so it shall stand. But I will break the Assyrian in my land, and on my mountains tread him underfoot. Then his yoke shall be removed from them, and his body removed from their shoulders. This is a purpose that is purpose against the whole earth, and this is the hand that is stretched out over all the nations. For the Lord of hosts has purpose. And who will annul it? His hand is stretched out, and who will turn it back? I take that one more time. Whatever the Lord of hosts has purpose, no one can annul it. This is not some verdict 93 or this or that. Uh, we annul this, this one. No, no, no. The Lord of hosts has purpose. Who will annul it? His hand is stretched out, and who will turn it back? That's a word of encouragement, a prophetic word to let you know that whatsoever God has purpose, we stand. And number two, for those who think they are so entrenched in their positions presently and nothing can move them, 
I'd like to read from the same prophet Isaiah 25, 22. I'll read from verse 15 to 23. Isaiah 22, verse 15 to 23. The prophet spoke by the word of the Lord. He said, Thus says the Lord God of hosts, Go proceed to this steward, to Shebna, who is over the house, and say, What have you here? And whom have you here? That you have hewn a sepulchre here, and he, as he who heals himself a sepulchre and I who cast a tomb for himself in a rock. Indeed, the Lord will throw you away violently, O mighty man, and will surely seize you. He will surely turn violently and toss you like a ball. Well, there is a, a fever going on in Qatar right now. You know how they toss ball. It will surely turn violently and toss you like a ball in case you think God does not understand soccer into a large country. There you shall die, and there your gracious, glorious chariots shall be the shame of your master's house. So I will drive you out of your office and from your position. He will pull you down. Nobody can say, I'm entrenched, I'm immovable, except the Almighty. Then it shall be in that day that I will call my servant Eliakim, that will be the replacement, the son of Hilkiah. I will clothe him with your robe and strengthen him with your belt. I will commit your responsibility into his hand. He shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. The key of the house of David will lay on his shoulder, so he shall open and no one shall short, and he shall short and no one shall open. I will fasten him as a peg in a secure place. If God does not secure you, you are totally insecure. If you think you are entrenched outside of God, he will move you and throw you like a ball. I will fasten him as a peg in a secure place and he will become a glorious throne to his father's house. I want you to be confident in God's word and God's promise that verdict 23 in Nigeria remains, Nigeria wins. Do not be discouraged. Do not be carried away by all that is happening. Stay focused on God. As you hear me share with you today the message, Paradise Lost and Paradise Gained. Father in heavens, we give you glory and praise. Of ourselves, we are nothing. But with you, we are more than conquerors. Our eyes are unto you. We are not moved by what we see and by what we hear. We are not moved by all the shenanigans going on in this nation. We are so confident in you that that which you have begun, you will finish. That you, which you have purpose will stand. No one can annul your purpose. And everyone entrenched in wrong places perpetrating evil in this day. Your word has been spoken. This is the era that righteousness will exalt this nation. Shame will no longer be our reproach. And as we step into 2023, our creative and turnaround year, we receive wisdom from heaven. We declare that there will be no shame, there will be no reproach upon this nation in the mighty name of Jesus. Hear from Amen. heaven, answer us, grant us utterance today as we speak. Let the entrance of your world bring light and understanding to the simple. Thank you, Father, for inspiration, for illumination, and for revelation. And I pray that what needs to be sorted will be sorted, what needs to be settled will be settled, and your people will be truly loaded this year as we step into our creative year. In Jesus' mighty name, and the people said, Amen. Amen. Paradise lost and paradise gained. Noah Webster, 1828, American Dictionary of the English language defines paradise in three major ways. That's a dictionary you must lay your hand on because its foundation and everything is about the faith that we all profess. Noah Webster, 1828, American Dictionary of the English Language. It defines paradise in three major ways. Number one, as a garden of Eden, in which Adam and Eve were placed immediately after creation. The first definition of paradise in that dictionary is the Garden of Eden in which Adam and Eve were placed immediately after creation. Number two, 
It defines paradise as a place of bliss, a region of supreme felicity or delight. A place of bliss, a, reg a region of supreme felicity or delight. And finally, it defines paradise as heaven, the blissful seat of sanctified souls after death. Heaven, the blissful seat of sanctified souls after death. In addition to the Garden of Eden and Heaven, Cambridge Dictionary defines paradise as a place or condition of great happiness where everything is exactly as you would like it to be. I will speak more on that today. You can access that through Google. If you take Google and, you know, look for paradise, you'll find Cambridge Dictionary there defining paradise as a place or condition of great happiness where everything is exactly as you would like it to be. It may interest you that the word paradise only occurs three times in the entire Bible and all of them in the New Testament. <laughs> the word paradise occurs three times in the entire Bible and all those three occasions in the New Testament. The first time it appeared is at the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ when he was crucified in between two thieves, one on the right and one on the left. Luke chapter 23, verse 39 to 43. Luke 23, 39 to 43, he reads, and I quote, Then one of the criminals who were hanged blasphemed him, saying, If you are the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other answered, rebuked him, saying, Do you not even fear God, seeing you are under the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you today, you'll be with me in paradise. You may begin to wonder, why was paradise not mentioned in the Old Testament? The first time paradise was ever spoken was Jesus speaking about it. He knew more than we, we know. He still knows more than we know. There are no new things under heaven, but there are many new things above heaven. The Lord of heaven said to the thief on the right, tonight you'll be with me in paradise. That's the first time you find it in the Bible. It's very important to know that in the place where the Lord was crucified, there was a garden, and it was in the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea, in that garden that the Lord was buried. Where he was crucified, there was a garden. In that garden, there was a tomb belonging to Joseph of Arimathea, and it was in that tomb, in the garden, that the Lord Jesus was buried. John chapter 19, 38 to 42. John 19, 38 to 42. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took the body of Jesus. And Nicodemus, who at first came to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pounds. Then they took the body of Jesus and bound it in strips of linen with the spices, as the custom of the Jews is to bury. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden. And in the garden, a new tomb in which no one had yet been laid. So there they laid Jesus because of the Jews' preparation day for the tomb was nearby. <laughs> Well, indeed known unto God from eternity are all his works. Or else, how do you explain that the battle that began in the Garden of Eden where paradise was lost was finally finished and won in another garden 
a clear testimony of paradise lost and paradise gained. Paradise lost, paradise gained. Paradise was lost by Adam, but the last Adam came in a garden to pay the supreme sacrifice for the penalty of the consequences of Adam's rebellion and he laid hold of that paradise again so that you and I can implement God's plan and purpose on the face of the earth. Fasten your seatbelt today because I'm going to share with you what the Lord has revealed to me, why I'm so confident, why I've not lost sleep, why I've not lost hope, why I know that this nation will work in my lifetime. Paradise mm -hmm. lost, paradise gain. The battle had been won. Amen. The second time the world paradise occurs is in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1 to 4. This was a place where Paul was caught up into third heaven. So when you see uh, the dictionary words are saying paradise also means heaven, you soon find out in this passage. And if I would do the connection for you, this was the time that Paul was stoned and left for the dead. And he was surrounded by the disciples. When I say, stretch your hands and pray for me, it's because I know as I carry God, you carry God, and the presence of God can be made manifest. The power to resurrect, the power to raise dust storms and everything when believers begin to pray, miracles do happen. As they surrounded him, he was raised back to life and he returned to the city. It was 14 years after he was given this report. 2 Corinthians 12, 1 to 4. It is doubtless not profitable for me to boast. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body, I do not know, or whether out of the body, I do not know. God knows. Such a one was caught up to the third heaven. And I know such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows how he was caught up into paradise and heard inexpressible words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Friends, certain things are called divine secrets. The secrets of the law belong to him, but when they are revealed to us, it gives us accurate timing to release them. Before he asks you to release, keep it to yourself so you can see all that is going on now. We know certain things that are about to happen and we are confident that it will protect us until those things happen. This nation will be saved. This nation will be changed. This nation will become great in my lifetime. I hope you believe same because this nation is already set by God to make it big time the nations of the earth will come and see what happened there. And I want to encourage you to please listen also tomorrow when I begin to share the difference between Bethlehem and Nazareth. Why was he born in Bethlehem? Why was he raised in Nazareth? You need to understand these things because you need these equipments and these tools to be strong in the season that we are in. It does not matter the storm. He is in the boat with us. Hallelujah. That's Amen. the second time you find paradise in the Bible. The last and the third time you find it in the Bible is in Revelation chapter 2, verse number 7. And it says the tree of life is in the midst of paradise. <laughs> he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Now here I come today saying paradise lost and paradise gained and we have seen that paradise is a scriptural word. Jesus spoke it first to tell the thief on the right tonight you'll be with me in paradise. Paul by way of revelation was caught up in the third heavens he found himself in paradise and if we are going to have access to the tree of life and God is going to fill us fat with wisdom with knowledge understanding as we partake of the tree of life, not of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, then access to paradise is made available to us by the Holy Spirit. Paradise was lost by Adam, but there was the last Adam who gained paradise back for us all. 
In Matthew chapter 28, it's so clear that the authority that was given to mankind in the Garden of Eden that was lost was restored. Maybe I should start from Genesis 1, 26 to 29 to let you see that God gave authority to mankind, especially to Adam and Eve, the first human on the face of the earth, husband and wife, gave them authority over the entire planet. They were in that paradise that they lost through rebellion. Genesis 1, 26 to 29 then God said, let us make man in our image and according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. And God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Now, listen to me. Authority over the planet was given to mankind. You will not know that it was lost until the serpent came into the garden, deceived Eve, alongside with Adam, they ate the forbidden fruit. They were kicked out of the place of bliss into blisters, a place of great advantage into disaster. They began to suffer. Sickness came into the world. Disease came into the world. Death came into the world because of sin. But one became sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him, pay the ultimate price for the fall of man, only just to regain paradise back for you and for me. And before he left, he restored that authority that was lost in the Garden of Eden. Matthew 28, verse 16 to 20. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. I pray that everyone under the sound of my voice today, you will find out later or sooner if you haven't found out what mountain the Lord has appointed for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And there are people doubting already. Left, right, and center, and see if what God had said will not come to pass. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore. Paradise lost. Paradise gained. Authority lost to the enemy. You remember when he took him in Luke chapter 4 to the mountain top? He showed them all the kingdoms of this world and their glory and said, this has been given to me and whosoever I will, I'll give to him. Worship before me and you can have it. And Jesus said, get it behind me, Satan. I'm going to get it not your own way. I will get it God's way. And he did. He took the keys of hell from hell. He took the keys of death from death. Render the abode of Satan so loose that we can enter in there in the name of the Lord Jesus and set captives free because the prison door had been opened. It doesn't matter who is laying hold on a person that belongs to you tonight in Jesus' name. From the grip of the wicked, we set them loose in Jesus' mighty name. And Jesus now said, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations without exception, including Nigeria. Make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. Brothers and sisters, as far as I'm concerned, this is the pathway to regain paradise in every land, to regain paradise in every nation, to regain paradise in every family, to begin to exercise divine authority given to us so that the paradise that was lost the glory that was lost, replaced with shame and reproach, it can be reversed and we can experience paradise on earth because our assignment is to bring heaven down on earth. I will get there in a moment. You know, every time that I have ever read the Lord's Prayer, I always see that is a coded message 
to bring back paradise on earth. Matthew chapter 6, we'll read from verse 5 to 13. Matthew chapter 6, from verse 5 to 13. And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. I surely I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room. <laughs> and when you have shut your door, pray to your father who is in the secret place, and your father who is in secret will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions. Don't make incantations. God knows every word before you speak them. He knows the thoughts of your heart. Don't use vain repetitions as the hidden do. For they think they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them. For your father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. God is not an infidel. In this manner, therefore, pray. Our father in heaven. Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Is there a plan and purpose for God in heaven for Nigeria? So our prayer is your kingdom come, your will be done or in Nigeria as it is in heaven. And that's when people ask me, how do we pray for you? This primary, this secondary, this tertiary, with this political, so pray only one prayer. Your kingdom come. Your will be done in Nigeria as it is in heaven. It's the most accurate prayer you can pray. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts and as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation. But deliver us from the evil one. I want everyone where you are, even if you, you can't unmute, just read the last one with me. For yours as a kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Repeat it one more time. For yours is a kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. When I say this is a coded message to turn wilderness into a paradise, a nation that is totally doomed to begin to experience boom, this is the coded message for it. And how do I mean? Well, there are three questions begging for answers in that closing sentence for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. First question, whose is the kingdom? The answer will be yours is the kingdom. But you use scripture to interpret scripture. The one who said yours is the kingdom also said Fear not, little flock. Luke chapter 12, verse 32. Fear not, little flock. It is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. It is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So what will be the accurate and appropriate answer to the first question? Whose is the kingdom? God's and ours. Number two, whose is the power? We heard him say in Matthew 28, all authority, all powers in heaven and on earth have been given unto me. But also in Acts 1, 8, he said, you shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit is come upon you. And in Luke, he says in Luke chapter 10, hey, I see Satan fall as lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you power over his power to thread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So whose is the kingdom? God and ours. Whose is the power? God and ours. And whose is the glory? John 17, 22 to 24. John 17, 22 to 24. And the glory which you gave me, I have given them. End of story. I'm not trying to uh, hijack God's glory. And I know your song. I know your beautiful song. He will never, never give your glory to anybody. Oh, Almighty God, that is your name. Okay, Almighty oh, God, hey, that is your name. You will never, never. No, he's not. No, we are not asking for it. He will not give it to any man, but I'm not just any man. I am his. I'm created for his glory. 
It will manifest his glory in my life and in your life. And as we stand in that place where his glory has risen upon us, his glory will impact our environment, impact our nation, impact our city, impact our families. And the glory which you gave me, I've given them that they may be one, just as we are one. I in them and you in me. That's the source of our glory. That's the fountain of our glory. That's how you develop and raise a glorious church. I in them and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one. And that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am. That they may behold my glory which you have given me. For you love me before the foundation of the world. So the third question, whose is a glory? His and ours. Dear friends, having understood what God has made available to me and to you through Christ, it is important to know and remember that kingdom authority is different from what is typically understood by many believers in today's church. So, I go to my next question. What is kingdom authority? I will define it in four major ways. I'm leading you to a place. It's going to be baptism of fire, of power, and of everything tonight. You will not be afraid of any evil tiding. You will not be afraid of any storm. You will not be afraid of any evil plaguing this world. We will not only make a difference, we will be different in the mighty name of Jesus. What Amen. is kingdom authority? Four major ways I'll define it. Number one, it is the authority to set people free from torment and disease. Kingdom authority is the authority to set people free from torment and disease. Number two, it is the authority to destroy the works of darkness. And to move the resources of heaven through creative expression to meet human need. Many things are going to happen in the year 2023. It's our creative year. It's our turnaround year. God is going to raise people from among us within the body of Christ who will possess creative ingenuity to make impossible possible. We will travel with the speed of light even faster than light in the days and the months to come. It is the authority to tell people free from torment and disease. It is the authority to destroy the works of darkness and to move the resources of heaven through creative expression to meet human need. Number three is the authority to bring heaven to earth. It is the authority to bring heaven to this earth. The church that is now uh, on the face of the earth is preparing to take people to heaven. Our message is live well, live holy. When you die, you go to heaven. We have forgotten that our assignment is to bring heaven down on earth. Does that mean there will be no rapture? Well, you know I don't believe in rapture. I believe in the catching away of the saints. The rapture word does not occur in the Bible. And we are not flying until we finish. We have to finish the assignment given to us. Moses finished this. Elijah finished this. The Lord Jesus finished this. I'm talking about me. I don't know, but I will finish my own. I will reach my goal. I'll fulfill my destiny. I hope you're saying the same thing for yourself in the name of Jesus. It is the authority to bring heaven to earth. And finally, kingdom authority is the authority to serve. The authority to serve. Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. Everything I've said, you are going to find out in these few verses of scripture. Matthew 10 verse 1. When he had called his 12 disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out, to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. Now let's go to verse 5. These 12 Jesus sent out and commanded them saying, Do not go into the way of the Gentiles. Do not enter a city of the Samaritans. Their time had not come. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. There are so many lost sheep in the church. A sick church cannot bring healing to a dying world. Go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach saying, 
the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons, freely you have received, freely give. Every definition I gave is within those verses of scripture. The authority to set people free from torment and disease. The authority to destroy the works of darkness and by creative ingenuity and expression to bring heaven on earth to meet human need. The authority to bring heaven to the earth and finally the authority to serve. Now, as you can see all around us in the world today, the truth of humanity's dominion and authority are extremely dangerous in the hands of those who desire to rule over others. God did not give dominion to man over woman. He did not give dominion to mankind over other races, as they call it. There's only one human race. God did not give authority or dominion to man over man. He gave dominion to man over the earth, not the people. But when people who do not understand it, lay hold of authority, they abuse it, it's dangerous in their hands, and they begin to rule over others, if need be ruin them. The warped concept of kingdom authority and dominion seem to validate some people's selfishness. However, when these truths are expressed through the humble servant, the word is rocked to its core. In all the years that followed trend in our nation, political trend, there have been only one leader that I can remember who said I'll be a servant leader. That was Jaradua. And unfortunately, he didn't live long. He began to take steps, but whatever is the reason, he died within two or three years. But I can say authoritatively to you today and convincingly that becoming servants to this world is the key to open doors of possibility that are generally thought as closed or forbidden. If God Almighty can walk in you and me to begin to serve God and people, to become servants, we will see that doors that were shut will be open because God is looking for such servant leaders in the corporate world, in the business world, in politics and everywhere. Let me paint two pictures for you and I want them to remain on the canvas of your mind. What manner of man was Abraham? Remember Abraham had soldiers trained in his house. He fought battles against four or five nations, defeated them all. God gave him victory. And then his wife died. And you will see this great man. He was called a mighty prince. I want you to see how he approached people who were more or less inferior to him, who did not have the power that he had, who did not have the material substance that he had, who did not have soldiers like he had. I want you to see how he approached them. Genesis chapter 23, verse 1 to 20. Sarah lived 127 years. These were the years of the life of Sarah. So Sarah died in Kajat Abba, that is Hebron, in the land of Canaan. And Abraham came to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her. Then Abraham stood up from before his dead and spoke to the sons of Heth, saying, I am a foreigner and a visitor among you. Give me property for a burial place. He did not plan to leave his father's house. He did not plan to leave his land. God moved him out at 75. Now his wife died in this foreign land. He said, I am a foreigner and a visitor among you. Give me property for a burial place among you that I may bury my dead out of my sight. And the sons of head answered Abraham saying to him, Hear us, my Lord. Please underline. Hear us, my Lord. You are a mighty prince among us. Bury your dead in the choices of our burial places. None of us will withhold from you his burial place that you may bury your dead. They couldn't. They didn't have his might. They didn't have his strength. He was a mighty prince among them. Well, let's see his approach. Next verse. 
Then Abraham stood up and bowed himself to the people of the land, the sons of Heth. And he spoke with them, saying, If it is your wish that I bury my dead out of my sight, hear me and me with Ephron, the son of Zohar, for me, that he may give me the cave of Machpelah, which he has, which is at the end of his field. Let him give it to me at the full price as property for a burial place among you. Now Ephron the dwelt among the sons of Heth, and Ephron the Hittite answered Abraham in the presence of the sons of Heth, all who entered at the gate of his city, saying, No, my Lord, that's the owner of the property. No, my Lord, hear me. I give you the field and the cave that is in it. <laughs> Not just the cave. The field and the cave that is in it. I give it to you in the presence of the sons of my people. I give it to you. Bury your dead. Watch Abraham. Then Abraham bowed himself down before the people of the land. And he spoke to Ephron in the hearing of the people of the land, saying, If you will give it, please hear me. I will give you money for the field. Take it from me, and I will bury my dead there. And Ephron answered Abraham, saying to him, My Lord, listen to me. The land is worth 400 shekels of silver. What is that between you and me? So bury your dead. And Abraham listened to Abraham and Abraham. Abraham weighed out the silver for Abraham, which he had named in the hearing of the sons of Heath, 400 shekels of silver, currency of the merchants. So the field of Abraham, which was in Machpelah, which was before Mamre, the field and the cave, which was in it, and all the trees that were in the field, which were within all the surrounding borders, were deeded to Abraham. Do you understand this? He buried all, he buried Sarah there. He was buried there. He became Abraham's possession in the presence of the sons of earth before all who went in at the gate of his city. It was after that he buried his wife there. I can take you to other scriptures where Jacob actually said, Abraham was buried there, Sarah was buried there, and so on and so forth. Isaac was buried there, Rebekah was buried there, there Leah was buried, and there must be buried also. Do you know that it was a strategic burial spot? Until you read the book of John, you will not know why they were being buried all in the same place. The Bible said the moment Jesus cried, the last cry, and said, it is finished, the graves were open. They were able to see him. Remember, he said, your father, Abraham, rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and he was glad. They were able to see him being crucified, the one who paid the price to restore authority back to the church, back to the people of God, to regain paradise that was lost. But none of them could leave the grave until his resurrection. It was after his resurrection that they came out and met people. I'm Abraham. This is Isaac. This is Jacob, this is Rebecca, this is Sarah. What you are seeing today, we are longing for it. We are looking for a city whose foundation and maker is God. We did not return to where we came from. Give me Matthew 27, 50 to 53. Matthew 27, 50 to 53. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And the earthquake and the rocks were split. And the graves were open, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. Known unto God are his works from eternity. Look at the picture of a mighty prince of the patriarch Abraham, bowing before people, showing himself as a servant leader, humble before people. He didn't say, I will use what I have to terrorize you. I will weaponize your environment. I will take whatever I want to take. Uh-uh. He did not have an entitlement mentality. That's the kind of leadership that Nigeria needs at this critical moment. Let's go to the seed of Abraham, the Lord Jesus Christ. The second picture is that of the Lord. Mark chapter 10, 35 to 45. Mark 10, 35 to 45 are we going to reclaim this land back for Jesus? 
Are we going to do it with arrogance, with pride? Are we going to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God so that in due season he could exalt us? Mark 10, 35 to 45. Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him saying, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. <laughs> if you read it in King James Version, say whatever we desire. So it's not everything you desire that God will grant. He must fall in line with his plan and purpose. And he said to them, what do you want me to do for you? They said to him, grant us that we may sit one on your right hand and the other on your left in your glory. But Jesus said to them, you do not know what you ask. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink and be baptized with the baptism that I'm baptized with? They said to him, we are able. Jesus said, no problem. You will indeed drink the cup that I drink. You know, shortly they beheaded, <laughs> they beheaded James. And, and, and John himself had to go to the island of Patmos. Be careful what you're asking God to give to you. You will indeed drink the cup that I drink, and with the baptism I'm baptized with, you'll be baptized. But to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give, but it's for those for whom it is prepared. And when the ten heard it, they began to be greatly displeased with James and John. Why? They wanted the same power as lords. But Jesus called them to himself and said to them, you know that those who are considered rulers over the Gentiles lord it over them. And their great ones exercise authority over them. Yet it shall not be so among you. But whosoever desires to become great among you shall be your servant. Please utter that word, servant. Say it, let your spirit man pick it, be your servant. And whoever of you desires to be first shall be slave of all. I am your model. I'm on your example, for even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Brothers and sisters, from these two examples, we can now see why God will entrust such authority over the universe to Abraham and to Jesus and ultimately to humble saints who are servant leaders. I'll repeat that. God deliberately will only entrust such authority to the likes of Abraham, to Jesus, and by extension, ultimately, to humble saints who are servant leaders. So come with me into the scriptures as we systematically decode the mind of God in this matter, especially in his dealings with Abraham and how he brought the saints who believe in Christ into the same equation. I want you to see that the battle was long lost by the enemy. Satan is not in charge of this world. He's called the prince of the power of the air, yes. He's called wicked ruler, yes. But his power has been completely eroded by the sacrifice of Jesus. And let's see the position today accurately so that we know what to believe. To start with, God gave the promise to Abraham that he will be the heir of the world. Romans 4, verse 13. For the promise that he will be the heir, one who has inherited, that promise that he will be the heir of the world was not to Abraham, or to see through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if those who are of the law are hearers, faith is made void and the promise made of no effect. Because the law brings about wrath, but where there is no law, there is no transgression. Therefore it is of faith that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed, God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things we do not exist as though they did. Who, contrary to hope, in hope believed, so that he became the father of many nations, according to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. And not being weak in faith, that's why we cannot slack and now throw caution to the me and say, well, I think it's all over. I think the campaign has started. I think I saw them in Chatham House. I saw them in Scattered House. I saw them in... It means nothing. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about 100 years old. 
and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully convinced, if you are not, then you can't be part of the heir. Being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. And therefore it was accounted to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, huh? but also for us. It shall be imputed to us who believe in him, who raise up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered up because of our offenses and was raised up because of our justification. There you have it, brothers and sisters, sons and daughters. God gave the promise to Abram that he will be the heir of the world. Will God now renege and go back and say, uh, people, I promise then I can't fulfill it anymore. No, too late. It's already confirmed by covenant. For this purpose, number two, a covenant was enacted and confirmed. You find in Genesis in 17, 1 to 13, where he confirmed the covenant and gave him the token of the covenant called circumcision. That same day, verse 22 to 27 of Genesis 17, Abraham at 100 was circumcised. So was Ishmael. So were all those in his house, whether freely born there or bought with money. If did his own side, and God eventually confirmed it in Genesis 22. By myself have I sworn. Blessing, I will bless you. In multiplying, I will multiply you. And your seed, don't forget, I shall possess the gates of their enemy. It does not matter what enemy is doing at the gate. It's ours. Their defense has a pattern from them. They are bread for us. Number three, the promise made to Abraham was to him and his seed, not to seeds. The promise made to Abraham was to him and his seed, not to seeds. In Genesis 25, 1 to 6, you see the other children of Abraham by Keturah, by the concubines. There were many. He gave gifts to them, sent them to the east, and left every other thing for Isaac. But that scripture is not talking just about Isaac. It's talking about Jesus. Galatians 3, 7 to 9. Who and who constitute the seed and heir of Abraham? Galatians 3, 7 to 9. Therefore know that only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand saying, in you all the nations shall be blessed. Read verse 9 with me. So then those who are of faith, not those who doubt, who are full of unbelief, those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. Then verses 15 and 16 of Genesis chapter 3. Brethren, I speak in the manner of men. Though it's only a man's covenant, yet if it is confirmed, no one annuls or adds to it. This one cannot be annulled. It's too late. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He does not say unto seeds as of many, but as of one, and to your seed who is Christ. So Abraham, Christ, how are we beneficiaries of the covenant that was long sealed and confirmed and that cannot be annulled? Let's go to Sam. Hey, it's a lot of scripture to read. Come on. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Galatians 3. I think that's enough for me. The same Galatians 3. There are so many scriptures and time is running out. Let's see Galatians 3, verse 26 to 29. Galatians 3, 26 to 29. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus for as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There's neither Jew nor Greek, there's neither slave nor free, there's neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. This is how we position ourselves in Christ, in the covenant God entered into with Abraham. And guess what's going to happen? My God. The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdom of our God and of his Christ, 
and he shall reign forever. My friend, it is through faith in Christ that the saints of God have become heirs according to the promise. Therefore, we need to understand that he made us kings and priests not to be spoiled or to soil kingship and priesthood as the world does today and as some so leaders even in the church would do. That's the norm. We must find a way of combining kingship and priesthood, servanthood and leadership together as God begins to position us in strategic places and as he gives us authority over this world. Let me share this with you. There are potential problems when a servant rules or when a fool is filled with food. The same thing happens when a hateful woman is married or when a house girl succeeds, I'm a dumb. Solomon warned that when you begin to see princes walking barefoot and servants rising upon horses, when you see servants ruling, there's danger. Proverbs 30, 21 to 23. For three things, the earth is perturbed. Yes, for four, it cannot bear up. For a servant, when he reigns, a fool, when he's filled with food, a hateful woman, when she's married, and a maid servant who succeeds a mistress, there will be trouble. But if we can do it as the Lord did it, if we can humble ourselves before God and let him perfect all that concerns us and fulfill his word in our life the way he chooses, then we will do what Jesus did. Jesus made a difference. He was king of all kings, but he was also servant of all. What did he do? He served with the heart of a king and ruled with the heart of a servant. I'm not sure you heard that. He served with the heart of a king, but ruled with the heart of a servant. This is the essential combination that must be embraced by those longing to shape the course of history in our nation and to regain paradise that we had lost. This is why I know that those with entitlement mentality cannot survive in this hour. They can't. The rules have been changed by God. Those with entitlement mentality cannot survive this hour, except they poor themselves. They have already swallowed a lethal poison and a killer disease. I want you to listen to the curse of King David on Joab. Joab killed Abner. Joab killed Amasha. Warriors better than himself because of his entitlement mentality so that he could take their positions. Watch as these begin to unfold in our nation. In 2 Samuel chapter 3, verse 17 to 29. Now, Abner had communicated with the elders of Israel saying, in time past you were seeking for David to be king over you. Now then do it. For the Lord has spoken of David saying, by the hand of my servant David, I will save my people Israel from the hand of the Philistines and the hand of all their enemies. We had a meeting today earlier on at ICRD and somebody brought a note that I spoke about in 1992, 1993, where I was talking to them about number 16. It's not something that I'm just saying, it's something that the Lord had said. Like it, believe it, don't like it, reject it. You are not under any burden. But when it happens, we will share bread with you. We'll be able to tell you, see what the Lord has done, what we have waited for had come to pass. Now God had spoken that he would deliver Israel through David. Abner heard it. Abner stood against him at the time, and Abner swore and said, look, let's do it. And Abner spoke in the hearing of Benjamin, and Abner also went to speak in the hearing of David in Hebron, all that seemed good to Israel and the house of Benjamin. So Abner and 20 men with him came to David at Hebron, and David made a feast for Abner and the men who were with him. And Abner said to David, I will arise and go and gather all Israel to my lord the king, that they may make a covenant with you, and that you may reign over all that your heart desires. So David sent Abner away, 
and he went in peace. At that moment, the servants of David and Joab came from a raid and brought more spoil with them. But Abner was not with David in Hebron, for he had sent him away, and he had gone in peace. When Joab heard, and all the troops that were with him had come, they told Joab, saying, Abner, the son of Ner, came to the king, and he sent him away, and he has gone in peace. Then Joab came to the king and said, What have you done? Look, Abner came to you. Why is it that you sent him away? And he has already gone. And surely you realize that Abner, the son of Ner, came to deceive you. Wicked people think wicked thoughts. Polluted people in their minds think polluted thoughts. Defiled people think defiled thoughts. Surely you realize that Abner, the son of Ner, came to deceive you, to know you're going out and you're coming in, and to know all that you are doing. And when Joab had gone from David's presence, he sent messengers after Abner, who brought him back from the well of Sirah. But David did not know it. Now when Abner had returned to Hebron, Joab took him aside in the gate to speak with him privately. And they stabbed him in the stomach so that he died for the blood of Asael, his brother. He killed him. After all, when David heard it, he said, My kingdom and I are guiltless before the Lord forever of the blood of Abner, the son of Ner. Now listen to the curse he pronounced upon him. Those who have killed in our land, who have destroyed lives, ruined people because of the ambition, this is about to happen. You can't sow bad seed and pray crop failure. The blood is still crying on the ground. Let it rest on the head of Joab and all his father's house. And let there never fail to be in the house of Joab. One who has a discharge or is a leper. Who leans on his staff or falls by the sword? Or who lacks bread? This is, David said, how dare you do this because of your ambition? You kill, you maim, because you have an entitlement mentality. Not only did David place a curse perpetually on him, that his child will be coming out of him, that he will beg for bread at the end of the day, he now counsels Solomon what to do, because he killed not just only Abner, he also killed Amasa. Listen to King David. First Kings chapter 2, 1 to 6. Now the days of David drew near that he should die, and he charged Solomon his son, saying, I go the way of all the earth, be strong, therefore and prove yourself a man. And keep the charge of the Lord your God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes, his commandments, his judgments, and his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses, that you may prosper in all that you do. And wherever you turn. And the Lord may fulfill his word which he spoke concerning me, saying, If your sons take heed to their way, to walk before me in truth with all their heart and with all their soul, he said, You shall not lack a man on the throne of Israel. Moreover, please listen. Moreover, you know also that Joab, the son of Zeruiah, you know what he did to me and what he did to the two commanders of the armies of Israel to Abner the son of Ner, and Amasa the son of Jetha, whom he killed. And he shed the blood of war in peace time, and put the blood of war on his belt that was around his waist, and on his sandals that were on his feet. Therefore do according to your wisdom, do not let his gray hair go down to the grave in peace. I tell you tonight in the name of Jesus, as the Lord leaves, these guys are not going to get away with their blunders. Everyone Amen. with the entitlement mentality will not survive in this hour in the name of Jesus Christ. Their judgment Amen. lingers not for every ambitious person who has eliminated others for their inordinate ambition. They too will pay with their lives in Amen. Jesus' mighty name. People of God, those who do not learn from history will repeat the blunders of history till they become history. As saints of God, and by His grace, royalty is our identity. Say that with me. Royalty is our identity. He has made us kings and priests to our God and Father, and we shall reign on the earth. You find that in Romans 5, 17. You find it in Revelation 1, 4 to 6. You find it in Revelation 5, 8 to 10. Royalty is our identity. But servanthood is our assignment. Servanthood is our assignment and intimacy with God is our life source. 
We are not going to bow to any God or any man to make us this or make us that. Our eyes are not unto any man. If God does not make you, the world will break you. Our eyes are unto God. Our intimacy with God is the source of everything that he will have us do. Our identity is royalty. Our assignment is servanthood. So when we are intimate with God and we are servants to the people, but we are rulers. When we are face to face with the powers of hell, we are rulers with zero tolerance for their influence. How are we going to exercise the mandate to regain paradise that was lost by Adam? I want to share with you seven realms or domains of society that must come under the influence of our king. And for that to happen, we are citizens of the kingdom. And as ambassadors of Christ on the face of the earth, must be prepared to invade the seven mountains of culture in a way like never before in this season. For that effective invasion, I want to leave seven words with you today, seven principles that you must embrace and you must begin to extend to people who are under your influence. Number one, there's no such thing as secular employment for the believer. Perish the thought. There's no such thing as secular employment for the believer. Once you are born again, everything about you and I once we are born, is redeemed for kingdom purposes. It's all spiritual. It's either a legitimate kingdom expression or we shall avoid it completely. Whatever we are involved with, if it's not kingdom expression, a legitimate kingdom business, then avoid it completely. There's no sort thing as secular employment. Number two, you must believe that every believer is in full-time ministry. Full-time. Only a few, maybe less than 2%, have pulpits in sanctuaries. The rest have their pulpits in their areas of expertise and favor in the world system. All believers are in full-time ministry. Number three, the call of God is important. Not because of the title he carries, such as uh, serving overseer, or deputy serving overseer, or general superintendent, or general whatever it is. The call of God is important not because of the title it carries or the title it does not carry. It is valuable because of the one who called us. So an assignment to be in business or in politics is as valuable in the kingdom as is the call for an apostle, a prophet, an evangelist, a pastor, or a teacher. The call of God is important, not just the title. So you must embrace your call either as a homemaker or as a missionary in a foreign field with faithfulness and thankfulness worthy of the one who has called you. Make sure that your business, your endeavor becomes your pulpit and carry a lot of grace into that area. Number four, our eternal rewards do not come because of how much money we made, how many souls were saved through our ministry, or how many homeless people we are fed or we are feeding. I'll repeat myself. Our eternal words, we not come because of how much money we make on planet Earth, how many souls were saved by us, or how many homeless people we are fed, or how many books we have written. All the words are given based on our faithfulness to what God has given and called us to be and to do. All our rewards are given based on our faithfulness to what God has given us and he has called us to be and to do. It doesn't matter the exploits you make if it's in the wrong field that God has not given you is a waste of your time. Number four. Because of the foregoing, the honor we give to one another must not be only those to those who have spiritual positions or occupations in the church. 
Honor must be given to those who are faithful in the call, no matter what it is. Honor must be given to those who are faithful to their own call, no matter what it is. Number six, our ministry, prophetic or otherwise, must not be focused on the sins of the world. It came to save sinners. Our ministry, prophetic or otherwise, must not be focused on the sins of the world. It takes very little discernment to see the filth and the death in people's lives. I'd like to challenge you that the prophetic in its purest form is designed to find the gold in people's lives and call that gold to the service. Listen to the series I did many years ago, Diamond in the Mount. Who knew Rahab would declare such glorious, life-changing, family-saving faith? Who knew that Lydia, the seller of purple, in Tartara, a city that served God, where there was no evangelism, no gospel ever preached? Don't let's fool ourselves looking for death and filthy things in people's lives. Locate the gold in their lives and the diamond and call it forth so that it can shine and contribute their quota. This approach will change the attitude of the world toward the church. And it will change the attitude of unbelievers to Christians generally. And it will make possible for us to be contributors to society, not just to confront errors of all that is evil. And finally, serving simply to get people saved. And, and I know you distribute tracts, you preach on radio, you preach on television. It's wonderful to be a soul winner. Praise God for all that effort. But serving simply to get people saved, as pure and as noble as it may seem to us as believers, is seen as a religious idea. It is manipulative to the world. If all you do is that you must be born again, if you're not born again, you are going to hell. They say, mind your business and leave me alone. Serving simply to get people saved, as pure, as noble as it may seem to us as believers, is manipulative to the world and they don't want to entertain it. They consider it a religious idea. Now, they will continue to put up their defenses. They will resist us. But let's compare that to what Jesus did. Serving for the benefit of another or helping others to succeed in their chosen endeavors with a kind of a servant's heart without putting religion on them. I give you a classical example. I love to preach about this. I enjoy it every time I read the story. The house girl in Captain Naaman's house, Naaman the leper. He did not tell about God, Yahweh. He did not call Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Shalom. We did not even know whether he was praying all night or not. There was a need in the captain's life. And he said, I wish, madam. He didn't go to him. Mom, I'm a captain. But I know one thing. If a guy can get to Samaria, ah, you'll be healed. She told her husband, her husband told the king, the king wrote a letter to the king, the king of Israel tore his garment, Elijah sent him here, he will know there's a prophet in Israel. Asked him to go and dip himself seven times. Nobody asked him before he took two mules of sand. He said, I will bow for no other God anymore. I now know there's God in Israel. He was helping another person, fulfilling their own obligation to become whole, helping them to succeed that made him to carry that in and say, I will go back and let the whole world know there's no other God except the God of Israel. And you know when they tried to attack Israel and Elijah was telling the king, don't go here, don't go there. The king of Syria said, eh, eh, hello, hello generals, who is telling our secret? There's only one person they will suspect, the one who just returned. <laughs> from, from Samaria. And he said, don't waste your time. Okay. Even what you speak in your bedroom, this is what we need to be able to give direction to the nation, to be able to tell them, don't go this way, it's a way of partition. Ah, 
but to be able to help them to succeed in their endeavors. When we begin to help them, a lot will happen to us. Whether at work, whether at home, whether in school, whether in the field of, of sports, when you begin to help people to succeed, you will easily influence them. And guess what? It has a greater impact in people bringing people to Christ. Here is my closing remark to every one of you. Thank you for allowing me to speak to your life all year long. Thank you for joining every broadcast of the church on Friday and Sundays. I'm careful now because I received so many uh, texts and WhatsApp because I said I had malaria yesterday. And the whole world began to say, now I'll be careful not to say everything everywhere. Thank you for your prayer. Thank you for your kind heartedness towards me. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your everything. I trust God that as we go into the year ahead of us, you are going to go into every man's world and make a difference in the name of Jesus Christ. And you'll be Amen. amazed at how white the harvest field is. This is my conclusion and the closing scripture today. Take it as a word put in my heart for you. Run with it because in 2023, you are going to reap where you do not be still liberal. John chapter Amen. 4, 35 to 38. Do you not say there are still four months and then comes the harvest? Behold, I say to you, and I say to you today, lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for they are already white for harvest. And he who reaps receives wages and gathers fruit for eternal life. Now both he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. For in this the saying is true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you have not labored, Others have labored and you have entered into their labors. In the name of Jesus, is going to enlarge your course at your number as you remain a servant leader and cultivate servanthood and mix it with your royalty. You rule with the heart of a servant, Amen. but you serve with the heart of a king and you bring royalty, royal touch to everything that you do in your service and others you see the harvest field while before you. Don't believe a lie that there are no jobs in the world. No, only faithful men are rare. Doors will open unto you. Windows of heaven will open. Doors of heaven will open. You have more yeah. than your heart could desire. And guess what? Come May 2023. I will see you at the top. God bless Amen. you. Bye Amen. for now. Amen. Wow. Wow. That was powerful. Royalty is our identity. Servanthood is our assignment. Intimacy with God is our life source. And the love of God, as our dear pastor shared, everything we do should be an outflow of the love of God. The love of God that gives without expecting anything in return. And that is what draws people to Jesus. We just thank God for that word. I just want to encourage us to go back to it and listen again and again, because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Listen to it. Let it take root in our spirit so it can bear fruit in our lives. At this time, I just want us to stretch our hands towards our dear pastor, and just bless him and pray for him. Let's stretch your hands. If you can unmute yourselves, please do, and just pray for him that the Lord will bless him. The Lord will keep him. The Lord will cause his face to shine upon him. Let's pray that everything that the Lord has spoken to him concerning his plans and purpose, the Lord himself will bring it to pass. Father, let your kingdom come and let your perfect will be done in our dear pastor's life as it is in heaven. Father, no. we just agree with what you are doing. We are not looking at the natural circumstance. We are looking at your word, your word that is able, your word that is more than able to change situations, to 
to align things in accordance to your will. Father, I thank you for your grace that is at work in our dear pastor's life to enable him become everything that you have ordained for him to be before the foundation of the world. Lord, we bless his family. We bless the, um, his children, his spouses, the grandchildren. We bless his generation, Lord, that even as he's serving the Lord, his generation will live for Jesus. His generation will serve Jesus. Lord, I just pray, Lord, we stand in faith. We stand in covenant. And Lord, Lord, we say, Lord, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name. It only takes one man. One man with God is the majority. It doesn't even matter what Satan is doing. Satan is already defeated. Lord, we just thank you. Thank you, Father, for your hand upon him, for your hand upon his family. We say thank you, Lord. And come May 2023. We are, in fact, we are already thanking you because we know it is done. We know it is done. In Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you once again, sir. God bless you and refill you to overflowing in Jesus' name. At this time as well, I would just want to call our sister Tulu Adioya to give us the appreciation and announcements. Over to you, Tulu. As a fellowship, we thank God Almighty for his grace, mercies, and favor, and for giving us the opportunity to rejoice with all city delight at home and in the diaspora as we celebrate Christmas in 2022, our acceptable year of the Lord. Indeed, we are sorted, settled, and loaded. We appreciate a serving overseer and deputy serving overseer, Pastors Tunde and Laide Bakari, for their continued leadership and spiritual oversight. We appreciate the leadership of the Citadel and all our brethren in Nigeria. We appreciate the steering committee, all subcommittees, work groups, and everyone who officiated in all meetings, prayer meetings, and events, including Atlanta 2022. We appreciate our diaspora brethren who are yet to be a part of the fellowship, but who most assuredly will join their fellowship now. God bless you all. Since CGCC Diaspora Family Fellowship debuted in 2020, the Lord has been good to us. We pray he will continue to be good to us, not only in 2023, but in the years to come even as we look forward to London 2024, when all sons and daughters of Pastors Tunde and Laide Bakari will once again gather as we did in 2022 at Atlanta. You certainly don't want to miss London 2024, the presidential edition. As we celebrate Christmas, we pray that we will come to the perfect understanding of the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior, and we will walk in the grace of obedience to His will. Merry Christmas! from CGCC Diaspora Family Fellowship. Thank you. It is now time for appreciation and announcements. First, we'd like to say a very big thank you to our serving overseer and deputy serving overseer, pastors Tunde and Laide Bakari, for giving us this platform first and foremost, um, and especially for today's meeting. It's, it's, it was an absolutely wonderful time. Um, I'm sure we can all agree that this is the perfect way to wrap up the year. And so we wanna say a very, very big thank you. We'd like to appreciate the Citadel leadership for their continued support. And would also like to recognize the presence of Pastor Abiodun Kole Owo of Doctor Church in Lekki, Lagos and our very own <laughs> Dr. Babajide Olodola, the chair of Omega Glocal. We're very thankful for your presence with us today. We'd like to appreciate the CGCC Diaspora Family Fellowship Steering Committee and every person who is on the call today. We appreciate you taking the time out to just share in this time of fellowship. And we pray that the Lord will truly crown your year with success in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, let's take, take note of the following announcements. There will be no Nehemiah prayer meeting. Uh, my apologies. <laughs> there will be no Nehemiah prayer meeting tomorrow, Sunday, December 18th, 2022. 
It would also not hold on Sunday, December 25th, 2022, and Sunday, January 1st, 2023. Meeting dates for subsequent Nehemiah prayer meetings and the Nation Builders prayer meeting will be announced through all of our communication channels. The next announcement is from the New Dawn Choir. There will be a special family carol tomorrow, Sunday, December 18, 2022, and it is titled Rejoice, the King is Exalted. The theme is taken from Revelation 19, verse 16. The carol will start at 9.30 a.m. West African time, and we are all invited. We're encouraging all Citadelites home and in diaspora to be a part of the New Dawn, prayer, the New Dawn Choir's praise and worship ministration, as well as the church service that will follow immediately afterwards. You can join online via YouTube at Citadel Global Online, Facebook at the Citadel GCC. You can join via the website live.thecitadelglobal.org and also via the citadelglobal.org forward slash audio for audio only streaming. London 2024. As we have heard, there will be a physical gathering of sons and daughters of Pastors Tunde and Lide Bakary, and it's gonna hold in London, England in 2024. And this one is tagged the presidential edition. So we're telling you way ahead of time so that you can plan um, as much as you can to attend. Dates and venues will be announced later. Finally, we have a book announcement. Uh, one of us, Pastor Shegun Adewale, has a book out on our serving overseer, and it is titled The Scent Brand, Pastor Tunde Bakari, The Legacy of a Man Sent from Above. You can get a copy of a book from www.wordoflifeworldoutreachmissions.org. You can get it from authorhouse.com, from the very popular Amazon.com, and you can also get it from barnesandnoble.com. For our friends in the US, if you opt to get your copy from the Word of Life World Outreach Missions website, you can make your payments via Zelle. Um, and for other countries, you can make your payments via PayPal. Please let's support Pastor Adewale as we all get copies of his new book. For further inquiries, you may also contact him at plus one seven three two four eight six nine zero two nine. Emails will also be sent to everyone in the CGCC Diaspora Family Fellowships database. Thank you so, so much for listening today. I do hope you were able to take note of all of the announcements and we look forward to seeing you next year by the grace of God. Over to you, Stebukon. Thank you so much, um, Sister Tolu. God bless you. Um, as she mentioned, and I will just reiterate, please note the information, dates and times she mentioned in your calendar and um, plan accordingly. God bless you as you do so. And finally, I'd like to call on our dear pastor, Antonia Odili, to lead us to pray as we bring this meeting to a close. Over to you, Ma. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. You say good things don't last. Just come, came to an end so, so quick. Hallelujah. I want us to just begin to thank God this evening, begin to worship and exalt his holy name for his faithfulness. There's a song that has just been resonating in my heart, and I want us to take it. All our to let me know. Oh, shoe bar and my rail. Oh, shoe bar and and so, Father Lord, we give you praise. We worship you. Our God, our King, our Maker, we exalt your holy name. Our strength, our shield, we worship you, Jehovah Lord. For food on our table, Father, we say thank you. 
for your faithfulness towards us. Lord, we say thank you. We thank you because you have not left us, O oh God, as those without a God. You have not left us, O oh God, as those without a help, but you have been our very present help. And Lord, you have spoken to us, O oh God, time in, time out, O oh God. We've come, O oh Lord God, Father, Lord, even today with a heart of gratitude, with a heart of appreciation, because Father, Lord, you are that God that speaks and it comes to pass. We exalt your holy name for that which you have started, O oh God, for where you have brought us to, Jehovah God, for where you are yet taking us to, O oh God. We've just come to say thank you. Thank you, Father, Lord God, for our going out and our coming in. Thank you, Father, Lord God, for your breath of life within us, O oh God. Thank you, Father, Lord, for sanity within us, even in spite of everything that we go through daily. Thank you, Jehovah God, for you have been our God, and you, Jehovah God, will remain our guide, even unto the very end, in the mighty name of Jesus. We appreciate you for 2023, oh God, because our eyes will see it. And those things that you have spoken concerning us, oh God, our hands will handle it, oh God. We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Let us share our benediction together as we bring this meeting to a close. And do remember to stay back just to say, extend um, pleasantries to one another, even after this. Let us go. One, two, go. Now may the God of peace who brought us up, who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make us complete in every good work to do his will, walking in us what is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen and amen. God bless you all. Thank you so much for being part of today's meeting. God bless you. God bless you once again. This brings us to the end, as Pastor Antonia said. Merry Christmas in advance. Have a wonderful, wonderful festive period. And remember, Jesus is the reason. God bless you. And please say hello to everyone. As a fellowship, we thank God Almighty for his grace, mercies, and favor, and for giving us the opportunity to rejoice with all city delight at home and in the diaspora as we celebrate Christmas in 2022, our acceptable year of the Lord. Indeed, we are sorted, settled, and loaded. We appreciate a serving overseer and deputy serving overseer, Pastors Tunde and Laide Bakari, for their continued leadership and spiritual oversight. We appreciate the leadership of the Citadel and all our brethren in Nigeria. We appreciate the steering committee, all subcommittees, work groups, and everyone who officiated in all meetings, prayer meetings, and events, including Atlanta 2022. We appreciate appreciate our diaspora brethren who are yet to be a part of the fellowship but who most assuredly will join their fellowship now. God bless you all. Since CGCC Diaspora Family Fellowship debuted in 2020, the Lord has been good to us. We pray he will continue to be good to us, not only in 2023 but in the years to come even as we look forward to London 2024, when all sons and daughters of Pastors Tunde and Laide Bakari will once again gather as we did in 2022 at Atlanta. You certainly don't want to miss London 2024, the presidential edition. As we celebrate Christmas, we pray that we will come to the perfect understanding of the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior, and we will walk in the grace of obedience to His will. Merry Christmas! from CGCC Diaspora Family Fellowship. Merry Christmas, everyone.